God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. Sing, Sing to, to God, God, O kingdoms, kingdoms of, of the, the earth. earth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The disciples said to Jesus, Now you are talking plainly and not in any figure of speech. Now we realize that you know everything and that you do not need to have anyone question you. Because of this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you believe me now? Behold, the hour is coming and has arrived when each of you will be scattered to his own home and you will leave me alone. But I'm not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world, you will have trouble. But take courage, I have conquered the world. The Gospel of the Lord. This last Sunday, we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension. So does anybody know what the Ascension is? What happened at the Ascension? Anybody know? 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead, what does the Ascension mean? Yes, Leo. He was taken into heaven or he himself went by his own power? Through his own power, Jesus ascended into heaven when hundreds of people were watching him. And he said, you know what? I'm going to come back just the way I left someday. So as Christians, we await the return of Jesus. And when he comes, in the end, he'll judge the living and the dead. And you know, some of the apparitions, some of the Catholics who seem to potentially have the gift of prophecy, suggests that one day there'll be this thing called the great enlightenment of conscience, where God will give humanity a special gift and they will be able to see clearly how they have responded to God's grace or how they have not. Because there's a lot of people in this world that have chosen not to believe in God. And that's really sad but they're being taught this in many respects because a lot of people who have control and power don't believe in God and so they try and get other people to go on their side. And what happens when you don't believe in God, you give people the idea that they can do whatever they want, that it's all about me. And the problem with that is usually we don't often know what the best thing to do is. So if you have a little brother or sister who's maybe five or six years old, do you think it would be a good idea to let them do the grocery shopping? I suspect they would come back with jelly beans and Twinkies, all right? Or things that they really like that aren't necessarily all that good for you. You see, because sometimes vegetables might not taste very good, but they're really good for us. We might rather have a candy bar instead of an apple, but an apple is a lot better for us health, for our health, than a bunch of candy. Now that doesn't mean that you can't have a piece of candy every now and then, but my point is that God is the one who really does show us the way. He helps us understand what society 
needs to tell people what to do if they want to do bad things. If somebody wants to steal your stuff, should we let them steal your stuff? Should society say, oh, that's just what they want. It's okay for them to steal your stuff, right? That would be wrong. We all see that. If somebody steals your stuff, they should get in trouble for it. Why? Because they chose something to do that's wrong. There is right and wrong. And the sad thing is that when we do wrong things, it in the end makes us really unhappy. If we do the right thing, it makes us really happy. Simple things. If you study hard for a spelling test, and then you take the spelling test and you get a good grade, that makes you happy. If you don't study hard and you missed two or three words that you say, oh, I know how to spell that. I wish, I wish I would have studied a little harder. That kind of makes you sad. You see, there's, I don't know, there's uh, some things, a lot of things on the internet, but there was one little talk. It was, it, the question was, what do you feel like when you're wrong? And everybody said like, oh, I'm embarrassed and I can't believe it. You know, I'm ashamed. Well, the person who was giving the talk, he said, that's not true. When we're wrong, we don't feel anything unless we know that we're wrong. There was a football player, Jim Marshall, okay? He played a long, long, long time. And I think it was back in 1964, he recovered a bunch of fumbles. But he's famous for one fumble that he recovered, okay? He picked up the ball, was disoriented, and started running the wrong direction. And he ran the opposite way. And he went all the way into the end zone that they were defending, and he threw the ball off to the side thinking he scored a touchdown. He felt great, but he just scored two points for the enemy, for the other team, right? People think that he probably didn't get into the Hall of Fame for that one mistake because he was a really good football player. He didn't feel anything. In fact, he felt great when he was running the wrong direction. Only after he discovered that he was running the wrong way did he feel really bad. This enlightenment of conscience will help everybody understand that many, many people are running in the wrong direction. They're running away from God rather than towards God. And when they discover that, and they don't know who God is, they're going to be really sad. And they're going to think probably, boy, if somebody treated me like I treated God, I would never forgive them. So they might say, well, God will never forgive me. And so they don't even seek God's forgiveness. They don't even ask for God's forgiveness. And they choose to be not with God. And so, all of us, let us pray that we can see clearly enough and go in the right direction, that we can discover that we're wrong. I think sometimes a lot of people will get an idea about a leader and they think this leader's a really good leader and they might even choose that leader and then they discover, oh my goodness, boy did I make a big mistake. But we pray for them and we pray for our world. We do what we can and never lose hope because we want the world to respect life. We want the world to respect religious liberty. We want the world to respect all that is true, good, and beautiful. But too often, we let our hearts become hard and we want to say, I understand everything myself. I don't need anybody. Let us pray that we respond to God's grace. Now, every day until Sunday, which is Pentecost, which is the day we celebrate the Holy Spirit come down, coming down upon us, I want us all to pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit that we might be recreated and thus renew the face of the earth. You see in that first reading we hear how they were called to be witnesses of these things. We too are all called to be witnesses 
Let us pray that we walk the right direction, that when we're deceived and walking the wrong direction, that we discover that so that we can feel bad about our mistakes, that we can respond like the baptism of repentance. That's what repent means. It means turn the other direction. I was walking one way, now I'm going to turn the other direction. Let us pray that we do that. Because when we're walking in the right direction, we can carry our crosses, and even though it's really hard, we can be filled with joy. Because that's what God wants for all of us. Because all of you are an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. So, never forget that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples. We pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For John and Ruth Benhart, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. That all the people who are wrong in this world, those people who reject God and His truth, may come to know and discover that they're wrong and be open to God's mercy, we pray to the Lord. For all the doctors, medical professionals, all those people who have asked for our prayers, for those to whom we said we would pray for, um, but just help those people who struggle and strive to keep our society healthy and safe, we pray to the Lord. That all corruption in our world be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and, and do all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.